Hello again, folks. So it's day two of the seven day mindset challenge. Uh, so today um, I'm going to be talking about how the environment that we work in dictates our performance. Uh, this is a new model which I've been working on. Um, I've used the term environment dictates performance a lot. Um, it's something which I learned from Daniel Priestley because it's something which he talks about a lot. Um, but I've now developed it into a much more sort of detailed model, um, which I'm now going to run through with you. So I hope you enjoy this one. So first and foremost, we have to start with the environment. Now, this environment basically where we work is ultimately going to dictate what our performance looks like. So I'm going to come on to that in a second. So in terms of the environment um, dictating the performance, so how, when we set out to do a piece of work, um, how we start doing that piece of work is actually really, really important. I don't know why it's just got really, really dark in here. I kind of look, feel like I look a little bit sinister on the video, but never mind. So uh, where we do our work is actually really, really important. And I'm going to try and explain to you why that is and how, how much of an impact the place where we work um, can have on our overall performance. And it's a little bit like the butterfly effect. So as you see this model develop, the further away um, uh, or how we set up the environment has a much greater impact on what happens when we get to the performance and delivery. Um, and so basically, the environment is about two different things. So, and, and it's always varying degrees. There's a contrast here. So the first um, environment that you could work in is noisy. So there's just a lot of distraction. I mean, why do you think I, I don't need an office necessarily as a business coach? I do a lot of my coaching sessions at nice hotels and various places like that. Um, however, I'm just going to turn my lights up because it's getting a bit dark in here. One second. There we go. See, set a better environment, so I'm a bit better lit now anyway. So um, we can have a noisy place. So I have an office. Um, I don't necessarily need it to do my job, but what it means is I have the separation from home. Um, I have a little sanctuary which I can come, come to whenever I want, pick up a book and read, or do some video filming and things like that. Um, you can also have a focused environment, which is where I'm, where, which is what I've created here. A noisy environment, for example, if you need to heavily um, concentrate on something, you don't really want to have your kids and dogs running around, the wife, husband interrupting you every five minutes. Um, you don't want to be in a noisy cafe where there's people coming and going and too many distractions and things like that. If you've got to do something and get it done, like JFDI it in sort of, I don't know, 60 minutes or 90 minutes or something like that, you need to find a quiet, focused space, which is going to create the best possible performance or output for the work which you do. What happens with the environment is it creates conditions. So these conditions can either be negative or positive. So what we don't do is we tend not to react to our environment. We actually react to the conditions um, that the environment creates. So if we're, um, I don't know, imagine, imagine when you're driving, like being in the car could be noisy. Um, it could be a place where you focus. But being in the car means that there are other people around you and then all of a sudden somebody cuts you up and you just lose the plot. Um, so it can create a negative um, conditions for you. Equally, it can create very positive um, conditions because um, let's say, for example, you go to a networking meeting and you had this piece of work to do and you, you, you had a, um, a, a, a positive chat with somebody at a networking meeting. It's naturally going to um, create a condition for you moving forward whereby you're filled with positivity and you don't need to react but you can be more proactive. So the next part is around reactions. So the environment creates these conditions that we then have a, a choice about how we react to it. So the choices around our reactions are either to be reactive or proactive. So reactive would be, oh, what an arsehole, he beeped his horn at me. Like, why did he beep his horn at me? And then that's all we get stuck in. Proactive would be, um, what can I do to avoid that situation in the future? 
you know, maybe I was driving too close, too close to that a car um, um, in front of us, or you know, why did he, why did he cut me up? So what it does is um, being proactive is about taking responsibility for the conditions that the environment has created. Being reactive is blaming it on somebody else. So what, and we have a choice about whether we either blame it and use it, uh, create an excuse. Um, uh, so blame somebody else for something or make an excuse that it was their fault. Or we have a choice about whether we're proactive and say, how can we improve this moving forward? Because it's that butterfly effect. Being reactive happens in the moment. It's like it, it just happens there and your mind tells you that you've just dealt with it. But in reality, the next time it happens, it'll be the same reaction. Next time it happens, it's the same reaction. Next time it happens, it's the same reaction. But being proactive is the thing which has lasting effects. And that's why you get this compound like butterfly effect of if we work in a focused environment, which creates positive conditions, which and, and we also include within that the mindset to be proactive with how we, um, you know, and you could move, you could be in a noisy um, environment with negative conditions. But then if you choose to be proactive about it and say, well, next time I'll make sure that I'm in a, um, a quieter environment. I'll make sure that the conditions I've created for me to work in, I have switched off my notifications so that I get less distractions, that I'm not on Facebook that much. So we can we can move from a positive um, space on this journey, so a noisy space, into a into a positive space, a proactive space, and then finally we end up with the performance. And at this point, we either have a poor performance, or I hope you're going to like this one. We have a fearless performance, where we've achieved our goals. Um, or actually, regardless of whether we achieve our goals or not, we know that we have given it our all. We've set up the, the, um, a focused environment. We've created positive conditions as a result of that. We've been proactive. But actually, if at the end of it we didn't achieve the results, we can stay, still say we set up the correct environment. Um, it's just a matter of circumstance that it didn't quite work out. And so we can actually then... Um, move forward with our journey and like I said it could be you start off focused and positive something goes wrong and then um, let me get a different color pen here so we start off focused and positive something goes wrong and we react to it oh I was on a roll God, if that telephone hadn't bloody run um, you know actually what happened there it wasn't necessarily about the telephone ringing it's about, about the fact that we didn't unplug the telephone in the first place or switch our phone into aeroplane mode or whatever it might be. So that can create a poor performance at the end of it because we've actually made the wrong choice at this point about how we handled that. So all I want you to do is at this stage is um, write down... Um, I'm going to do a little matrix for you with these various different options around it. And I want you to write um, uh, a positive and negative um, experience about both. So when you've had a noisy environment versus a focused environment, when you've had a creative negative conditions versus positive conditions, and the conditions you have no control over, by the way. Um, so that's that's worth me worthwhile me writing down on there. So we have no control. So we have do have some control over our environment. We have no control over our condition, over the conditions that happen as a result of the environment. We have a lot of control over how we choose to um, interpret those conditions. Um, and again, we have, we don't always have control over the performance. So we can do our best, but it may be a good performance, it may be a bad performance. It doesn't, but the key thing is we don't beat ourselves up over it. So all I want you to do basically is to, um, uh, in the matrix, just put good experience, bad experience, good experience, bad experience, reactive, proactive, poor, poor performance and where you performed your best. Um, and then we will share that uh, uh, as always in the Facebook group, uh, Fearless Facebook group. And if you've got any questions about this, obviously um, leave those in the comments box as well. And um, I am hopefully going to hear some really positive stories about how you had some fearless outcomes um, as a result of the environment, the conditions and the choices which you made um, in terms of doing something. Uh, catch you later for day three.